Welcome to the history of music technology as it relates to the roadie coach. Now there are six important steps that had to be made in order to get to the development of the roadie coach. And that first step is the six string guitar. So let's take a closer look at the six string guitar and its development. The invention of the six string guitar is credited to Luthier Gaetano Vinaccia. Vinaccia was from Naples, Italy, and his family is responsible for making and producing the mandolin, a popular stringed instrument at the time. Eventually, in 1779, Vinaccia created the first six-string guitar that we know of. Later on, Antonio de Torres Gerardo of Spain took Vinaccia's six-string guitar and made some changes to it. Thanks to Gerardo, he gave the six-string guitar the acoustic look we know it to have today and popularized the instrument in the 1800s. Now that we have the development of the six-string guitar, our next important step is the mechanical metronome. Let's dive into the metronome and when it was made. The mechanical metronome's making is credited to Johann Nepomuk Mezel. In 1815, he developed the first metronome. However, it's worth noting that the making of the mechanical metronome can't be completely credited to Mezel. Dietrich Nicolas Winkel had invented many of the processes Maisel used in his metronome. In fact, Maisel had tried to buy this off Winkel, but when Winkel refused, Maisel took his design anyways. Maisel then added the tempo scale onto Winkel's design and coined it as his own. Winkel tried to fight Maisel taking his design, but the metronome was already too popular among the public to do this. So whenever you see a mechanical metronome, remember who really invented it. Moving on, part of the reason the metronome became so popular was because Maisel was friends with well-known composer Ludwig van Beethoven. In fact, Beethoven became the first composer to put metronome time markings into his scores. This meant that other composers that wanted to perform his symphonies would know the exact tempos that Beethoven wanted rather than interpreting it. After this, the metronome rose even more in popularity among the common population. Some composers felt that the metronome went against natural music but most people valued the metronome too much when it came to learning and teaching music. Now that we have the guitar and metronome, the next development we are going to look into is the electronic tuner. Now let's take a closer look at the electronic tuner and its history. The first successful electronic tuner was the Strobocon. It came out in 1936 and was developed by the Con Company. This electronic tuner was specifically a strobe tuner which happens to be the most accurate of any tuners that we have. Strobe tuners work by having a memorized frequency of different notes, and when one plays a note, the machine compares it to the memorized frequency it has in its system. Then, the machine displays lights that strobe, as well as a disc that displays a strobe when it's spinning. If the lights and the disc strobe together, the note is correct. If they aren't strobing together, then the note is incorrect. Here's a short clip of a Strobocon tuner being used so you can get a better idea of how this process works. So we'll need to turn our gain knob up some so we can hear our instrument. And the picture you see on the screen and the clarity that you see is going to kind of directly be related to the amount of gain. If you have too much gain, it will be fuzzy. If you have too little gain, it will be faint. So it seems like about halfway is the good point for this particular guitar. And on the high E, you can see it is tracking to the left, meaning that it's flat. So if we sharpen the note up a little bit here, we can bring it into tune. There we go. That's actually a very, very good picture here. Now that we've seen the development of the guitar, metronome, and electronic tuner, our next development jumps forward in time by almost 70 years to the invention of the popular video game, Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was one of the first at-home rhythm games to exist. Slightly before Guitar Hero, there was a Japanese arcade game called Guitar Freaks. Guitar Freaks came out around 1998 and influenced the company Red Octane to create their own version of this game to be played at home. Guitar Freaks was a lot like Guitar Hero as it featured a guitar-shaped controller. However, since Guitar Hero was one of the first at-home rhythm games, I'm going to focus on it. The first Guitar Hero game was released in 2005 and was only available to play on the PlayStation 2. This game used a guitar-shaped controller, featuring five buttons on the fretboard and one button at the base of the guitar. 
This game let the player pick any of its featured songs, and the player would have to then hit the corresponding button that they see on the screen, along with strumming the string button at the correct time. This game simulated guitar playing and was extremely popular at the time. The Guitar Hero franchise went on to create several games, and some still play these games today. Here's a clip of the original Guitar Hero game. After the development of Guitar Hero, music started inserting itself more and more into online technology. The next development we are going to look into is Tonal Energy. Tonal Energy came out in 2013, and it was, and still is, one of the most popular apps that musicians utilize every day. Tonal Energy is a tuner, metronome, and recorder all in one app. The app serves as a huge convenience to musicians every day. Instead of carrying around a tuner or a metronome, they can instead use it in the same place with something they already carry around, their phone. Tonal energy works by intaking the sound that one would sing or play on their instrument and showing whether the note is sharp, flat, or in tune. The app displays a circle, and if the note is sharp, there will be an arc at the top of the circle. If the note's flat, the arc will show at the bottom of the circle. If the note is in tune, the app makes a smiley face with a large green circle in the middle. Like I said before, this app remains one of the most popular phone tuner and metronome apps there are today. In fact, it's ranked number one in the music category on the iOS App Store right now. All of these steps lead up to the development of our last step, the Roadie Coach. The Roadie Coach takes rhythm games, app convenience, and music technology all together in one app to teach users how to play the guitar. The Roadie Coach itself attaches to your guitar, ukulele, or lets you sing to determine if you're playing things correctly. Additionally, the Roadie Coach lets you pick from several songs and teaches you how to play by recording your playing and offering instant feedback. It also offers convenience by acting as a recording device and a MIDI controller. Through the development of music technology, from the six-string guitar to the convenience of the phone tuner, we were able to get the Roadie Coach a rhythm game that utilizes real instruments and teaches you how to play guitar through a fun, engaging, and convenient way. I hope you all enjoyed looking at the history of music technology, and thank you for watching.